Okay, workplace 20, 1.1. We're gonna start off with slope and rate of change. And I'm just gonna point this direction a little better. We got a bit of reading to start with, guys. So, okay, slopes, whatever hidden slopes. Rise over run them is what we're gonna be focusing on. Mathematical slopes. A um, couple of things, words. Ratio, it's a comparison between two numbers measured in the same units. So if you rise up three feet, your run should also be measured in feet, not inches. Okay? Um, the example here, engine runs on a mixture of gas and oil. 15 liters for every one liter of oil. They're the same unit. Then you can say it's a 15 to 1 ratio. Okay? And you can give ratios with a colon, dot, dot, or else as a fraction. I prefer fractions. You'll see. A proportion is a statement of equality between two ratios. Basically, a fraction equals a fraction. And we talked about this, about how to solve it if there's an X. Brief. We'll continue with that. Now, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to skip ahead here. So ratio and proportion are words you're going to hear about. We'll write all ratios like this, second page, right, with me. Such as 5 to 2 as fractions. So the 5 to 2 ratio that I was talking about, well, grab me pen here. Yeah, right away, all I need is just to say, I, this is as simple as this. If you see 5 to 2 like that, you write it. 5 to 2 as a fraction, like that. That's just as simple as it gets. And to solve a ratio problem, remember, you guys will remember this. Cross multiply, divide by the loan, right? Now, I showed you guys that a bit on the board. Some of you know this from me, grade 10, that's the phrase that pays. We'll use that. Let's just do a few examples here and make sure we know how to do that with a calculator. And if you ever forget your calculator, you could use your phone, but if it's a task and stuff, I'll make you a machine calculator. calculator. So, not that you need to write out your work, because I'm assuming you know how to use your calculator. I'm going to ask you to solve for x here, right? Cross multiply the two diagonal numbers across the equal sign. 2 times 12 is what you enter in your calculator. And then divide by the loaner. Divide by 3. You can do it in your head, you can do it in your calculator, but I want you to do it. And all I expect from you, because it's repetitive, is just to write down the answer. I'll give you guys a second and I'll wait for an answer. So do it though. And I want you to write your answers down as x equals. And Jake, you got her? What'd you get? Good. Eight is great. You got eight as well? Okay. Your fingers weren't giving you the answer. Okay. Okay, I was thinking like two, three. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean here. You mean sections, excuse me. Okay. Can you guys just I'll pause this video here for a second? Finish the other two. We'll double check our answers together. If you're watching the video, pause and do these and check your answers again. Resuming, and Emma, what answer did you get for the second one? 16 would be F. We're doing it right, so if it's on the bottom, same method, cross multiply, divide by the owner on the top. Now, these ones you could have maybe done different methods, but cross multiply, divide by the owner. Yeah. <coughs> 35, excuse me. Okay. Now, depending what's asked, you guys know how to solve those things if you need it. Oh, rough. What's the ratio of concentrate to water? Yeah, if I'm reading it backwards, sorry. I just need a second. Here. Okay. In a juice mixture, 750 of water mixed with 250 of concentrate juice, you know, frozen OJ and it's like old South or something. I crazy brand. No name is Anyways, 
Um, <coughs> really? My chair broke? Alright. It's broken. Give her a, don't be shy, give it a try. Anyways, what I, or what the ratio is, concentrate to water. They're in the same units, mils and mils. So it's as simple as concentrate to water, I'd go 250. Now the the one way I don't like this very much, but I'll just show you. 250 to 750. I don't recommend that now. Remember I said we'll use fractions. So we'll go with 250. I'm gonna put a C here for concentrate. Just so I know what I'm talking about. Seven. Oh, my pen gets screwy here sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna rewrite. Two fifty, and I'm putting the C for concentrate. Seven fifty, and that's for the water. There's a ratio. I could reduce it. I could go. I'll take off the ten. Like divide by ten. You know. 25 and 75, but you can probably see that 25 goes into both 75. And you guys know what I'm talking about there? I'm talking fast. I divide the top and the bottom by, I could do it quicker too, but by 10. And I've got a 25 to 75 ratio. Okay, that helps me out a bit, but do you see I could divide by 25 into both? And I've got a 1 to 3 ratio. One group of concentrate to three groups of water. And that's usually how they give directions on frozen orange juice and stuff like that. Because you dump the one can in there and then you put three cans of water in it, right? It's a one to three ratio. Something like rice. It's in a one to two ratio often. It depends what kind of rice and if you wash your rice and stuff. But uh, it's a one to two ratio. So if you've got six cups of rice, you need 12 cups of water. And you adjust it a little bit. So then what? Well, that's it. That was just asked for the ratio. It didn't ask you to solve for if you're trying to make a large three liters of juice or something. Now, this as a fraction, it says here. Same idea, but it makes a shade of paint. You need 2.3 liters of blue with 1.7 liters of yellow. They're both in liters, so this is good. What's the ratio of blue to yellow paint as a fraction? I'm just going to say, if you just want the ratio, nothing to solve, you just put 2.3 groups of blue to every 1.7 groups of yellow. Now, use some kind of sensible label, B and Y sensible for blue and yellow. It's as simple as that for those. I'm going to show you a couple others. On the next page, and then I'll leave you to spread your wings and fly. Working with slope, because it's a race. Okay, so we're flipped. You may have heard the words pitch, slant, steep. So those guys are working on slope. Too. What do these terms mean? They're describing slope. Slope is a ratio that combines the change in height or vertical distance the sideways or horizontal distance. It's a ratio between those two numbers, and it can be expressed as follows. Slope is the, this triangle means change. Change in vertical distance over the change in horizontal distance. But don't focus on that too much. To me, it's in the circle. And we use the variable m in math most often for the slope, m. We tend to use the word rise because it's a more common sense word and run. So rise up and down, run is sideways. So the, the formula that you guys, the best form of it will be this one, which you guys have circled on your page already, right? Rise over run. Yeah. Verticals up and down. That's why I'm using the word rise and run. It's just kind of like, it's more like a nursery rhyme. I said, oh, rise over it. Now, how about this? We'll try this out and see if we understand one way to do this. I'll get back to my camera. 
calculate the slope of a line that has a rise of 12 for every run of 8 centimeters. So what do we mean by that? This is something like, well, think of this. If I had a rise of 12, so I'm going to just pretend I measure this, and it's 12 centimeters. And 8 is a little shorter. So there's my 8 centimeters. So what is the slope of a line that sort of starts here, goes up 12 and over 8? That's the rise and run. That's what that literally means, right? So we're saying, what's this line's slope here? Well, rise over run. I'm going to use m. 12 up is the rise. And they're the same unit, so I don't need any unit on here. Rise over run, 12 over 8. And you can reduce a fraction like this. What's the number that divides top and bottom numbers? In this case, 4. It went right to the biggest number possible. So if I divide 12 by 4, you could use a calculator if you don't know these, but you might be in trouble. 8, it's 3. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 3 halves is the same thing. If you use a calculator, just every fraction can be thought of as a division problem. 1.5. If you want it as a decimal. Okay. Now, rise over run. You're going to have some problems, and I know I'm going a little fast. Let's, let's try this example four together. I give you the slope, and the slope is 7 out of 20. What's the rise if the run is 100 meters? So what we're saying is, so like this. If you have a line, and it goes, say, rise of 7 or a run of 20, right? But this line doesn't just stop there. This line is a lot longer. But it has the same slope. Think of a staircase, right? If you had 7 out of 20, and I repeated that again and again and again, it's the same slope. But in this particular example, we're saying, what's the rise when the run is 100? Now, I'm just drawing this on the side so you just kind of understand all the time. And I know you've worked with slope in, in 20, right? Uh, foundations. And 10, foundations 10 and 2. So do you guys see how it's the little triangle can help you learn things about the big triangle? They're similar shapes. We're going to set it up as a ratio proportion. <laughs> Fractions in this one. And we're told that the slope of the line is 7 out of 20. So I'm going to get you to put this as a fraction. 7 out of 20. I'm told it's a slope. So I know that the top is the rise. I'm going to just put this in here. That's the rise. This is the run. OK. And I just put that in as a label. Oh, some of the distance. Yeah. That's rise and run. I'm just putting that as a reminder. Now, now I want to find information out about the bigger situation, right? We told the slope is 7, rise, 20, run. What is the rise if the run is 100 meters? So I've got to do some matching. If I have rise on the top, I have rise on the top on the right side. So on the left, I have run on the bottom, and you'll always with slopes. I gotta have run on the bottom on the right side. And I was told that the run is 100 meters in the situation we're wondering about. So I'll put my 100 there. And what I want to find out is right there. Now you know how to solve this, right? Let's just set it up. Cross multiply, 7 times 100, divide by the lower. And excited because I like to know answers. Yep. 35. X is equal to 30. Now, this is a problem where they were giving units. This was in meters, so this will be in meters as well. Okay? 
So if you have a unit, if it's dollars, use dollars. If it's centimeters, use centimeters, kilograms, use kilograms. Yes, you do. And on the first page, did I skip the question? The blue paint? Yeah. That's it. It was just said do the ratio, which is only one fraction. There's nothing to solve. So that's when you get a ratio. Whereas if it says find the extra side. Two more, and then I'll turn you guys loose on these, and we will be good. The slope of a hill is 3 out of 190, a rise of 3, a run of 190. So it's not that steep. The hill has a rise of 400 meters. What's the run? The horizontal distance. So we're going to set it up the same way. I'm going to suggest that we write the slope, 3 out of 190 on the left side. Yeah, not much, but it's a gentle, it's a Saskatchewan hill, right? It doesn't qualify in Alberta. So, 3 out of 190, rise over run. If it's rise on the top, it's got to be rise on the other side. And that hill has a rise of 400 meters, so I'm going to put that there. If it has a rise like that, what is the run, the horizontal distance? Cross multiply, divide by the loner. And yeah, they didn't really think this one through very well. Whoever created this multiple. That's why I don't use the text book much. I'll use handouts. Because you're going to see something right away. A huge number, right? 25,000. Or what is it? 333. We'll round it off at that meters. That's 25 kilometers going up 400 meters over 20. You wouldn't really notice that when you're driving. It's a very gentle slope. And you're right. I, I don't know that I'd call that a hill either. Okay. The last one, though, I need to show you, because it isn't given as a fraction. It's given as a decimal. And here we go. The slope of the staircase is decimal 95. And the rise is 210 centimeters, what's the run? So, I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to put my slope on the left side. But this looks different because I don't have a slope in a fraction form. So my question to you guys is, if I want to make this a fraction, what's the one number I could put on the bottom and it won't change anything? What can you divide by? Six divided by what gives you the same number? Six. Yeah. So to make it easier to think about so we can solve this problem like all the others, make it a one, just like when you did cosines and sines, you did that too, right? Out of one. Okay. So if I got decimal 95 as my rise and run, we could set this up. If it rises to 10, what's the run? There we go. This makes sense. This is actually a sensible question. Now, the reason why I'm not work, I usually work it down, but I just don't have the space that I set on the paper. Cross multiply, 10 times 1, divide by 0.95, and you get a larger number, right? 221? I round. Unit. And that is, I'll stop the recording.